going to have a lot to say in this class about security. And we want to kind of get warmed up for that with an introductory lesson on securing your network. Why do we need network security today? Well, because our network is more important to our organization than ever. Yeah, more and more, the operational efficiency, the productivity of your organization ties directly to the network. This can be from the smallest of mom and pop environments to the most complex of organizations. So we desperately need the network. And today, the network is more accessible than ever. So these are some very powerful needs that we have for network security. You see, networks oftentimes in decades ago were closed systems. The company owned and operated absolutely everything that was in that network infrastructure. Yep, they owned and operated all of the equipment. There was no ability to access stuff outside of the network infrastructure. And, and they owned everything, and it was a completely closed system. Well, security is less challenging in that environment than it is in the typical environment today, which is a very open network. Notice the public internet is used in order to provide the major connectivity. And because the public internet is used, we have the exact opposite situation of what we had in those previous networks. We have an open network environment instead of a closed one. And obviously this gives us much more concern from a security perspective. On top of this challenge, we have the fact that tools to attack your network are more readily available than ever. And the knowledge required to use these tools has decreased. So when it comes to hacker tools, they're easier to find than ever. They're easier to use than ever. And this is a very, very dangerous crossroads that we're at. Add to this the fact that more and more organizations are wanting to conduct business over the public internet with what we call e-commerce, and we have even greater challenges when it comes to securing our infrastructure you're probably starting to get a little bit of a headache about this, right? You're probably starting to get some heartburn. And it gets worse. These days, the motivations by larger and larger different groups of individuals has expanded. So there's more people that want to attack us from terrorists to competitors to spammers to former employees that are upset. They might want to embarrass us. They might want to steal from us. They might want to just challenge our organization. And there's a wide variety of ways in which they can attack us. So security is more important to organizations than ever before. And that's why some of the very first classes that we developed here at stormwind.com specialize in network security from CCNA security all the way up to CCNP security. And they're some of my favorite classes to teach here at stormwind.com because of the importance of these, of this growing field. By the way, Ben asks, Anthony, are these slides, these amazing graphics available offline somewhere? You know, they are not. Uh, you have them, of course, to view as many times as you would like in the instant replay product. But one of the challenges is these are not slides, as you probably already guessed. Uh, these are flash-based animations and, and 
they, they, they just kind of live in our virtual classroom system. But, uh, but you know, that that's definitely something to think about for the future. I, I like you, you take a look at this and once this slide finishes all of its animation, you know, there's got to be a way we can like screen capture this slide or something and, and make it available to our students. But to answer your question, as of right now, the only way you see these slides again is through the instant replay product. So thanks for that question. And I'll breach the subject with our producer about, you know, gosh, isn't there a way we can, you know, provide a static copy of this content out to our students? That would not be a bad idea. Now, when they're attacking you, when computer criminals or script kitty even is attacking you, there's going to be some common categories that you can take their attacks and put them into. And this is obviously a good exercise to do, right? Because you want to make sure that you guard against each of these categories in simple and powerful ways so that you can catch easily the most number of attacks. The first category is what we call physical installation attacks. Like a hardware threat. They gain access to the secure room that you have your routers in and they take a sledgehammer and they pound your router into a pancake. That's what we mean by a hardware threat. An environmental threat. They trigger the sprinkler in that room. So now all of your stuff is soaked. Or they cut power to that room. That would be an environmental threat. An electrical threat. Uh, that would be cutting the power, actually. So an environmental threat would be things like too much heat, too much water. An electrical threat would be power surges, cutting the power. And then a maintenance threat is that you're not prepared for things like spare equipment. You don't have a spare on hand, or you don't have spare cabling on hand, okay? Or you're not labeling all of your equipment properly so that when you go into the server room, you don't even know what's connected to what. So these are all what we call physical infrastructure categories of attack. Reconnaissance attacks. These refer to the individual taking an inventory of your stuff. Yeah, they're mapping out your stuff. They might gain access to a personal computer on your network, for example, and they go to this personal computer and they go IP config forward slash all. IP config forward slash all, and they document what they find there. They document your IP address, they document your subnet mask, they document your default gateway, your router setting. Okay, they come in here and they document absolutely everything they can about your network. How about this? They access your PC and they run this little beauty, netstat hyphen an. And this shows all of the ports that your computer has open and is listening on. So netstat, readily available in the Windows system, shows all of the ports that your device is listening on. These are obviously gateways through which you could be attacked. Or how about this complimentary uh, download? It's called ZenMap. Yep, free application. Let me launch it here. And let me size it so you can see it. And ZenMap is a complimentary download. And I'll put my target subnet in there, 192.168.1.24. And I'll say, I want just a quick scan of the network. 
And now what this Zen map will do will be to scan the network and pull up the address information and open port information for all of the devices that are on that subnet that I specified. It'll even put them in a nice topology map for me once it finds them. Look at this, it just found a device out there, 192.168.11. What's open on that device? Web services, secure web services, web proxy services, and an alternate uh, secure web port. Wow, it just found 192.168.121. This is an Apple device out there. What's open on it? UPnP, Airport Admin, and something called SNET Sensor Management. Those are all TCP ports that are open on that particular device. If I go over to the topology now, I can see all of these devices mapped out. Now let's see, there's gotta be a zoom option here. There we go, there's a zoom. So, these tools are awesome that they're available for you and I free of charge when we are maintaining and troubleshooting our network. But you see how these tools, when they fall into the wrong hands in your network, can be very dangerous, right? This is giving someone way too much information about what is going on in our network. And those are the type tools that would be used in a reconnaissance type style of attack. Yeah, they are going in and they are mapping out your network. Access attacks refer to the actual attempt to get something out of our network. So they're trying to get our data or maybe they're trying to get on our network and boost their privileges to an administrator and then make changes that are unauthorized to our network. And finally, we have a class of attacks called password attacks in which the user, the computer criminal, is just trying to gain access to key passwords that are used in the infrastructure and they're trying to do this, of course, because then they're going to go on and they're going to do some access type of attack. Let's bring in one of our guest experts, and he literally is an expert in the area of computer security. His name is Ed Yanez, and he is in charge of network security at a large Fortune 500 company. Let's hear what Ed has to say regarding protecting our network's Passwords. Password attack threat mitigation. We're going to take a look at how you can protect your passwords because if somebody owns your password, they own your device. Now, make sure you do not use default passwords. Default passwords are well known. They're on the internet. Anybody who has access to the internet has access to that password and it's going to try that as their first attempt to get into your system. Do not allow users to use the same password on multiple systems. Now, sometimes you can't get around this. You might have some users that are in charge of 5,000 systems in some ISPs. That's entirely possible. What you want to do in that case is have a user password based on the region. Okay, Your region boxes uh, for this pop will have a password. For this di a di different pop, have a different password. For the core, have a different password. That makes managing passwords a lot simpler. You want to make sure you disable accounts after a certain number of unsuccessful login attempts. Now, some administrators like to block accounts after three or five missed attempts. That's not really a good idea. Your IT staff is going to get pretty mad at you because they're going to do a lot of pattern resetting of passwords. Give them 10, maybe 20 attempts. That's not enough for a brute force attack and your users are going to eventually get their password correct. Now, do not use passwords in clear text formats unless they're one-time passwords. If they're not one-time passwords, you want to make sure you use encrypted passwords. 
Finally, make sure you use strong passwords. I like to use pass phrases, something like Wild Wild West, where I use a capital W, maybe a capital I. I use a one for the L's. I uh, use a bang in between. So it's something easy to remember and very secure. Great stuff. Thanks so much, Ed. Well, everybody, let's wrap up this lesson number two on a quick look at security, and we'll revisit network security in this course. It's so important, but let's wrap up this section with a quick question of you. Which two factors have recently influenced the increase in threats from hackers? Our job is to choose the correct two. Hacker tools require more technical knowledge to use. Hacker tools have become more sophisticated. The number of reported security threats has remained constant year to year, or hacker tools require less technical knowledge to use. Which two factors have recently influenced the increase in threats from hackers? Well, everybody likes B and D. Let's see if they're correct. Hacker tools have become more sophisticated and they require less technical knowledge. Great work. Yeah. What a dangerous intersection, right? They're easier to find. They're more available than ever. And they are easier to use than ever.